What's up, everybody? Sunday session, episode 45, here to deliver a ton of insight and value into operating, growing, scaling an Amazon FBA wholesale business. For any of you who's this your first time joining, my name is Eric Castellano. I'm the owner of Amazon Lit. Super excited to be here. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Let's not forget what Memorial Day weekend is for, is to honor those who've passed away serving our military and armed forces. So shout out to all of you who've served for our country. It means a lot. But we're ready to get rocking here. Any questions, let them rock. Let them rip. I'm here to provide insight and value. If you are an active or used to be in the military or the service, I'm happy to give you 20% off of our program. So just send me a message on Instagram. No problem setting that up. You know, I want to provide as much value as possible. So we appreciate your service. Um, so typically the holiday weekend sales are going to be pretty slow. You know, a lot of people are traveling just, just based on how many people are in here. It tells that it's a holiday weekend. Usually there's three or four times the amount of people in these calls. Uh, but typically holiday weekends for Amazon are, are very slow for sales. We got a few of them coming up as well. You know, 4th of July will be slow. Labor Day will be slow. And then that's really the end of the slow season. And it's going to really ramp up, um, especially back to school. I know Amazon, I had a call with my account rep a couple weeks ago. Amazon is going super heavy this year on back to school promotions, advertising, pushing those products to the front of the page. So if you can get some inventory backpacks, Crayola, colored pencils, staplers, all of that good stuff, if you can get that inventory, it could be massive for you in the beginning of this back to school year. It could be massive. On a weekly basis, do you notice slower sales on weekends versus weekdays? So historically, our highest sales days are Sundays and Mondays. Our lowest sales are Fridays. And it makes absolute sense when you look at it because typically we sell consumable inventory, right? Grocery, health and beauty, home and kitchen, health and household, all these products that people use, reuse, and reorder. Typically Friday, you would think would be a higher sales day because people are getting paid, but no, people have other things going on in their lives. They're typically not ordering, at least for the products we sell on Fridays. Sliding Fridays historically our slowest day. Our highest days are Sundays and Mondays. And the reason why Sundays and Mondays are our highest days is because it's the start of a new week. People are stressing. They got kids. They got life. They got responsibilities. They got work. So instead, what they're doing is ordering these products on Amazon to save time in their lives. So historically, crush it on Sundays and Mondays. Fridays are slowest day. And you'll be able to determine that on your business by just popping up your cell phone and looking at those little orange bars in your Amazon seller app. You know, expand it for the whole month and you'll be able to see what days typically you sell more inventory on. Tech News just asked, pending orders, is there any way to accurately see how much money is in there and how much commission is removed versus taking the averages? Yes, yeah, so this is a great question. So very straightforward, you go to your manage orders tab and at the top left, it says pending. You click pending orders and it looks like I have over a thousand pending orders. So essentially you take the total number of all of those pending orders and, or no, I have over 10,000 pending orders. You would take the total of all of your pending orders. So for example, me, I got, what are we on? 50 a page, 220 pages. So 50 times 220. So I got about 11,000 pending orders on my Amazon account right now what you would do is you would multiply that by your average selling price so our average selling price is about $22 so I have about $242,000 in pending orders revenue now Amazon keeps about 45% of that pretty standard 40 to 45 percent. So if you multiply that number by the remainder of what's left after you subtract 100 minus 45, which is 55, you get back about 55 percent of your revenue. So if I multiply 242,000 by 0.55, we have about $133,000 in pending inventory. Inventory that, that's about to be shipped to the customer, it's waiting for payment, and we will get disbursements on that inventory, majority of it. So that's the best way to calculate 
um, your estimates for what your disbursement will be based on what's pending in Amazon. About to do 52 to 58 this month. Any advice to hit 60 to 70 next month? Yeah, advice number one is join the seller's ride. Advice number two is send in, send in more, more inventory, right? Whatever the amount of units you sold to do 58 to or 52 to 58,000, figure out the math of what units you need to sell to do 60 to 70,000. And then make sure you have enough inventory available to hit those numbers, right? And a great way to check that is simply checking your inventory planning tab, right? And on the bottom left, you're going to see aged inventory summary. You're going to total those up, right? So I got like over 300,000 orders in stock. So whatever, let's just say you have 10,000 orders in stock. Right. In order for you to do that 10 percent increase, you should have about 11,000 orders in stock, assuming that they're profitable inventory and that they will sell through. And there's a few ways to leverage that. Whoever asked that question, I don't remember who it was, but um, a replenishing existing inventory that you already know is profitable and is selling through and then b adding new SKUs to your inventory. Right? It's important to do both. You cannot just rely on replenishable inventory because the replenishment aspect, it's going to run out at some point, right? Or the listing's going to no longer be competitive. You have to keep bringing new ASINs into your inventory. My inventory runs is 11.8 days in inventory is 31. That's healthy, correct? By the way, I'm already par. Oh, awesome tech. So yeah, that's really healthy. That's like par for the course tech news. You know, you want to be around right around 12 inventory turns a year. Um, a lot of times I work with sellers and I pop into their inventory turns and days in inventory and they have like eight turns, six turns. That's that's too it's too low. Too low. Six turns. That means every your average products in stock for about 60 days. Imagine cutting that in half, how much more valuable that cash flow would be to you. Right. And I'm a firm believer that a fast nickel is always better than a slow dime. I don't want to wait 60, 90 days to make a slow dime. I'd rather flip that inventory two, three, four weeks, make a quick nickel and be able to reinvest that money back into my business. And when I'm saying nickel and dimes, I'm not. It's just a, it's a metaphor. I'm not actually talking making a nickel and making a dime, even though I met with tons of business owners where when they analyze their profits, that's the type of money they're making. No, we definitely don't let Amazon name our SKUs, Georgie. Uh, we have a very straightforward SKU template. It's it's the date that the SKU was created, followed by the price in which the SKU was paid for, followed by the supplier initials, filed by the, the item number. And this lets us organize, document um, the information a little more clearly in our business. Yo, Eric, just got to say, love me and you at ASD, brother. You're amazing. My question is any suggesting on approaching brands that already sell on Amazon? Yeah. So here's the thing with brands that already sell on Amazon. And from my experience, it's something I've learned is that typically when a brand themselves is selling on Amazon, they're not very good at it. And that's not a blanket statement. There's some of that are very good at it. But typically, your regular brand who's selling on Amazon, they don't understand the marketplace very well. So what I do is I put together what we call a pitch deck, which is covered in our brand workshop. And I put together a pitch deck and I point out to them the missing pieces in their marketing. Right. It could be they don't have infographics. They have no SEO. Their bullet points are trash. Their images need updated. They're not enrolled in brand registry. They need enhanced brand content. They're not spending money on advertising. It can be a litany of things that they're missing. Right. And we covered this at our inner circle event back in Vegas, our live event. We covered in thorough detail exactly you know, what to look out for, how to put the information together, and then how to deliver it to the brand to make sure that you're able to close these brand deals. But essentially what you're doing is looking for gaps, gaps in their system. You know, where are they failing themselves? And then how are you going to improve that? And then most importantly, how will those improvements result in more money for the company, right? Because if your improvements aren't going to result in more revenue, then, then what's the purpose of them partnering with? The reason why they partner with sellers like me and sellers like you is to grow their business, right? Not stay stagnant, not stay flatlined. I'm working with a brand right now. We, we've we been doing about three years in business. First year is like, I think, 100,000. Second year is like 300,000. And then this year or this past year, 2021, we did, I want to say 1.8, maybe even 2 million. And this year, the goal is to do 3 to 4 million. But here's the thing. They're pushing for me to keep growing the brand and like pushing me and emailing me every single day. 
well, not every single day, but at least once a week. Hey, Eric, you know, we're, we're, we're not meeting what we did last year. And it's challenging to do that, especially when you start scaling these brands to certain levels. Like getting from 100K to the 1.8 million we did last year was a breeze. But now getting 1.8 million to 3 million, 4 million is going to take a lot more effort on our end in order to do that. New listing creations, optimized ad campaigns, Google targeting off of Amazon to bring them back onto Amazon. There's so many things you need to implement in order to help grow those brands. Here's a word of advice for anybody who's never dealt with a brand before. Um, A, if you're not in any of our communities, please join um, because there's tons of value in there. But B, give it a try. I remember my first brand deal. It was a child's snack pack. One of those go-go fruit squeeze, kind of like that, right? Where they got the little packs where they squeeze the fruit juice out of them or the fruit puree. I met this company at a trade show. I met them at Expo West. They're located in Colombia. They wanted to bring their products into the United States. It's the first brand deal I ever did. Signed the contract. They shipped me the inventory. Um, I created the listings. And what I did was I went to our local grocery store. I literally bought all the fruit that was inside of them. Mangoes, pineapples. I cut them up. I bought a light box. I took all the pictures. The pictures were probably the best listing images I've ever put together in my entire life, right? They were, they were so crisp. They were perfect. They explained everything about the product. We launched the product on Amazon. It sells some inventory, you know, but rank just never caught up. We ran coupons. We ran ads, social media ads. We did everything. The brand was just not picking up and, and come to find out the, the, the name of the brand just didn't really fit. It was, it could be misconstrued as something else. So it wasn't the, the perfect child's name or child brand name for that company, which definitely caused some issues for us. But we learned so much. I didn't make a penny on that deal. I probably lost about four or $5,000, but I don't see it as a loss because essentially what I did was I paid four or $5,000 to learn invaluable information that I'll be able to implement for years and years to come with other businesses that I take exclusive on Amazon, which I currently do right now. And we have some pretty massive uh, exclusive contracts. How do you send open cases intended for display at grocery stores, for example, ketchup, can you treat those as cases and send to Amazon? So you're talking about shippers, which is essentially when you walk into a grocery store, they'll have a cardboard cutout with, let's say, the 24 ounce ketchup and then the 24 ounce sugar free ketchup. Um, so, yes, you can treat those as cases and send them to Amazon. Typically, though, they they exceed the dimensions that Amazon requires for shipping inventory to Amazon. Typically, those shippers are greater than 25 inches long. Right. So it doesn't really make sense. And you're not even allowed to send them, whether SPD or LTL. But we typically repackage those shippers into smaller boxes and send them to Amazon. And also, a lot of the times there'll be mixed skews in those. Right. So you get the sugar free ketchup and then you get the regular ketchup and then you might even have two different sizes of ketchup all in one shipper deal. So, no, you could not ship that direct to Amazon and have them figure out how to sort the um, it's recommended to do that yourself. Yeah, tech, tech news. Send me in a, a message on Instagram. Um, I'll send you over the details uh, about Inner Circle, but it comes at three different tiers. It's three different tiers. And, and the requirement to be, which you already meet, the one that I 100% know of is your are niece seller's rye. And the second requirement is you must operate a seven figure a year business. Um, and you must be awesome. And if you, so you meet, you must be awesome because I see you in these calls every week and you're in these sellers arrive. The only thing we need is verification that you do at least seven figures a year and then you're eligible to join Inner Circle. Um, so we do have uh, an explanation in our brand workshop where we show you how we put together the pitch deck, uh, but we go into much, much, much more detail inside our Inner Circle. The Inner Circle event was a revolutionary that we put together. Nobody else is talking about the shit we talked about at that Inner Circle event. Happy Memorial Day, right? It's an important day. And recognize all the, all the people who passed away for serving in our armed forces. Um, so shout out to anybody who served or had a family member who served or passed away. Shout out to all of you. Seriously. It's super important. You helped mold this country into what it is today. And it's a fucking land of opportunity. Yeah, we got shit happening crazy like Governor DeSantis down in Florida. That guy's a joke, right? But it's like America's pretty cool at the end of the day. Right? Could have used some improvements? Absolutely. All right, so shout out to all the, the people who served, especially those who passed away.
I saw you ask the question before tiers to our mentorship. So e sellers rise one tier. Inner circle is what has tiers, but unless you're doing a million dollars, don't even think about inner circle. It's not for you yet, right? So the goal is join e sellers rise. My goal with e sellers rise is to help you build a million dollar business. So you can join the inner circle and then I can help you build a $10 million business. Or if you're already operating a $10 million business, I help you build a $30 million business. And if you're already operating a $30 million business, I help you build a $40 million business a 50 million dollar business that's the name of the game so i'm in russell brunson's inner circle i actually my my uh i just expired a couple what, maybe 30 days ago i'm about to renew it um i also pay for um some one day services so for example i paid 10 grand just the other day to go down to florida and meet with a guy who I just sat with for like six hours and he sunned me on the game. And I also do a lot of investing in myself as far as traveling to events. I'm going to SellerCon in Austin in a couple of days. And I'll post these in the, uh, these are some good events I suggest attending. I'm going to post these in the, in the YouTube chat. And they're in order of when they are. So if you're in these areas, hit them up. So the, the first one I just post in the YouTube chat is Ecom Summit. This is the first event of its kind. I've never been. I'm invited as a speaker, but I know the guy Brexton who's putting it together and he's got a nice little system going on. It's going to be a little more interactive, right? Giving people actionable tasks that they can leave with and immediately implement into their business. So I'm super excited about it. Ecom Summit is in Chicago on August 1st and 2nd. So if you're in the Chicago area, it's a no brainer to get out there. I think tickets are a couple hundred bucks and and I believe they're 50% off until the end of this month. And I'm a firm believer of going to as many events as possible. The next one, which is August 20th to 23rd, this is another event I suggest going to, it's ASD. I just posted the link in YouTube as well. ASD is a, whole tr a wholesale trade show. Um, it's very friendly for Amazon sellers. So if you've never been to a trade show, I highly recommend going to ASD, especially if it's your first. And then the third one is happening in New Jersey and it's AMZ United. This is Scott Needham's event and got a lot of love for Scott. I've known Scott for, for many, many years. He's an OG in the game. He's built some amazing software. He's got a very good head on his shoulders. Um, so we will be at that event as well. Beginning of August, I'll be in Chicago at Ecom Summit, and then we'll be at ASD on August 20th to the 23rd, and then we'll be in Newark, New Jersey on August 31st. So those are three events that I'm attending. I encourage you to get to at least one.